Hi, I'm Steve Rosales, and welcome to another edition of Belmont Journal. You know, the Belmont town election is April 2. There are two candidates standing for the position of town moderator. Joining us today are one of the candidates, Mike Crowley. Michael, how are you? Nice to see you. Thank you, Steve. Welcome, welcome. So, uh, simple question. Can you tell our viewers about yourself and, you know, your family? What brought you to town? So we, we originally came to town for the school system. And um, frankly, uh, you know, after uh, talking to a lot of other parents and poking around a little bit, um, I did become concerned about school funding. Um, but that was sort of my, my intro into um, town government. Uh, I, I, I ran for and, um, and was elected to town meeting um, in 2016. I, um, um, I was uh, Mike Widmer, the, the current incumbent, in, appointed me to the uh, warrant committee at about the same time. Um, and um, I've, I've, inv I've enjoyed being involved in our local town government. And um, frankly, um, I, uh, my family has enjoyed the community. Well, that's terrific. So you, so you weren't born around here or brought up around here, or were you? No, I, I was I, I was born in California, but um, you know, interesting thing uh, about doing genealogical research, I actually have some ancestors that go back to sixteen the sixteen hundreds. Um, um, they were settlers in w Watertown, which comprised uh, part of what we now think of as Belmont, and um, also some were in Boston, and um, so. There, there is a long history that stretches back, um, which was forgotten for many years. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, that, that's always, I'm afraid to look at my history. You never know. I have uh, a wide variety of ethnic blood running through me from uh, four uh, grandparents that came from four separate, uh, their own separate countries. Oh, so. frank, frankly, it's the same with me. So, it's you know, can you beat Greek, German, Albanian, Romanian, and Filipino? Well, how about Lithuanian? In Belgian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. We'll have, we'll have an ethnicity <laughs> off one of these days. Anyway, so how long have you been here in town then? So after all of that. So, so we, moved, we moved to town in 2015. Um, okay. And, and Warren Committee. And so, and then you were also what? on the? I was so a, you've served Belmont. So it's been what? How's my math? So nine years. Nine years. And, and, and you've during, done quite a bit with the community. Tell us right. about it. Well, so... So I've been on town meeting um, almost since we got here, 2016. Um, I was appointed to the warrant committee and, and served on the warrant committee as, as an appointee for three years and then continued, continued to serve on the warrant committee as a school committee liaison for three of my four years on the school committee, which, which ended um, last April. Yeah, you didn't... You didn't uh... You had what? One term? Is that what it was? Four-year terms? No, Four -year I, terms no. There are, there are three-year terms. I had, um, I I ran for a, a, a truncated term. Oh, a it, yeah, a vacancy in there yeah. somewhere. So. And um, so for for my <coughs> first my first term was one year. Okay. And and then I ran again for a full three-year term. Well, there you go. So and uh, so and so you've been out. You haven't been on that, but. Now you're standing for moderator. So why did you decide to to run for town moderator? So town moderator is is a really interesting position. I think most people think of it as this is this is the person who runs town meeting, but um, and and that's that's a really important job and and a difficult job. But um, in addition to that, um, our moderator also makes appointments to many of our committees, including the Warrant Committee, the Comprehensive Capital Budget Committee, Bylaw Review Committee, um, and uh, the, the various building committees. We have a permanent building committee, we have a middle and high school building committee, which is winding down, and we have a library and rank, two separate committee, uh, building committees. Uh, the moderator makes the appointments to these committees. In the case of the capital budget, uh, it's the majority of the appointees. Um, warrant committee is something that has interested me for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the, the, the moderator, in making these appointments, um, you know, 
greatly contributes to the kind of, of you know, budget discussions um, that take place. Um, it's, it's, something, it's something where I think that, so, you know, after, after six years on the Warrant Committee, um, you know, I, I'm really interested in public engagement and, and community-based priority setting when it comes to budgeting matters. And we have very little public engagement um, on the Warrant Committee. Now, people can tune in and, and watch the, the, you know, over Zoom um, or, or over Belmont Media. Um, uh, they can watch the, the Warrant Committee meet, but um, there's really little process for community input into the budget recommendations that they make to town meeting. And, you know, those recommendations are powerful. And so I, I am concerned that we need a warrant committee. And in fact, this, this goes for all of our committees, you know, a, a committee that's representative of the variety of voices that we have in the town, one that, um, um, one that is committed to public engagement and um, one that is going to be thinking about what are the community priorities that we have to be thinking about as we put together our budget recommendations. Well, when you served for all those years on the Warren Committee, did you not experience that? No, so the, the, the Warren <laughs> Committee, there, there, there is some work that takes place in uh, there's some work that takes place in subcommittees, um, but 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 frankly, I think we need to have um, we need to have the warrant committee holding budget hearings that are um, at a, at a minimum op you know open to the public via uh, um, open meeting law. So so whether whether that's uh, providing for an ability for the public to sit in in person or watch over Zoom or Belmont Media. I, I, th this is something that, that, that doesn't really happen. I, and, and it's something that I think needs to happen. We, we also need a, um, a warrant committee that is more actively engaged in doing budgeting work. So um, by law, the, the warrant committee is actually charged with uh, uh, producing the town budget, and that's something that that you know we've not been doing for, for, as long as you know many people in town can remember, but but whether whether they do that or not, and there are arguments for, for you know allowing the town administrator to to, to and 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 the schools to put together their separate budgets and then have those budgets presented to the warrant committee. That's fine. But um, what the Warrant Committee needs to be doing, from my perspective, is engaging in a little bit more of the work that I'm familiar with from my days in Washington, D.C., when um, you're heavily scrutinizing budgets. Um, in, in my former position at the Office of Management and Budget, the White House Budget Agency, and you're asking, you're asking deep questions, you're doing analysis, and um, you know, there, there is some of that that takes place, but I would like to see a lot more of that taking place. And um, frankly, I, I think some of that depends on getting the right people on the committee. Okay, so in doing that, well, do you see the role as a moderator? Do you see a moderator as a partisan position? No, not at all. So, so personally, you know, I, I have been an advocate for school funding, but the moderator is not an advocate can't afford to be an advocate, the moderator needs to ensure that the appointments are representative of, of the, the town, the community that we live in, and that they have the appropriate skills to do the job. So, you know, I, I, have, I, have, you know, I have ideas about how we can improve the budgeting work, but I don't regard that as partisan. Okay, so, um so you mentioned that the role is to appoint certain committees. So how would you go around uh, about uh, selecting those appointees, or would you have a philosophy in, in making? 
no, on I, those appointments. I, I do General have a philosophy as to how to make those appointments. Yeah, I do have a, a philosophy about that. I mean, one of the mm. things that I'm interested in is transparency. And we have, I mean, transparency can mean a number of things, but the select board and the warrant committee, they each have some, dis so they both make appointees to certain committees. <clears throat> And um, when they make those appointments, you know, they have some discussion at their respective meetings that are covered by open meeting law. And so people are taking minutes, which are available to the public. Mm -hmm. People can sit in on these meetings. They can watch over Zoom. <coughs> and for the, the <coughs> moderator's appointments, we really don't have that kind of a process. The, the moderator doesn't have a committee. One, one of the things that I think would be very useful would be to stand up a, moderator, a moderator's advisory committee composed of town meeting members because ultimately the committees that uh, the moderator appoints to are in a sense organs of town meeting. Um, this, this moderator's advisory committee of which the moderator, um, I, I see the moderator as being a participant in that committee, um, could be a vehicle for considering and discussing potential appointees to, to the various committees and um, doing so in, 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 uh, in a public manner that, um, that ensures that you know, people have some information about the, the skills, the background, um, and, and just who's being appointed to our committees. And this is not to say that our current moderator is doing anything wrong. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying there's anything nefarious. What I am saying is that we're, we have a process that lacks transparency and I think it could be improved. Okay, so you, you, you're considering this, this advisory committee. So, you know, any idea as to number and how you select who's on the committee? Well, one of the ideas I have is, so, so frankly, you, you don't want a committee that's too big, but, uh, but you know, if each of the precincts were to elect um, one or two members of such a committee, um, that, that would ensure that, um, you know, the people who are advising the moderator are at a minimum um, at least selected by members of their respective precincts. That's, that's one option. Another option, and, and that's an option I favor, to be quite honest. Another option is to pick those people myself. Um, it's, it's a less favorable option um, because we do, we do want to have a variety of voices on a moderator's advisory committee as much as we would want to have them on any other committee. Um, um, so, I mean, ultimately, I would like for town meeting to be selecting this committee. Okay, well, that, then that puts, well, it, it seems to me that just puts the power of that in someone other than the moderator. I still think <laughs> the moderator ultimately makes the appointments, and, and I, I would not strip the moderator of that responsibility, but, uh, you know, having the appointments deliberated before an advisory committee subject to open meeting law at least provides for a certain amount of transparency that we don't have now. All right. Did, well, you went through this. Did, did the current moderator, uh, Mike Widmer, who appointed you, your initial appointment to the, that was an yeah. appointment yeah. From, from moderator Widmer, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Uh, did you not have to go through some kind of a vetting process to, to get that done? No, I, well, in Did a, you find in, fault in that? In, in a sense, yes. So, 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 um, the, the moderator interviewed me, and um, and we had a, a, a nice discussion. I, I probably shared a resume. I don't recall. Um, this is going back a number of years. Okay. But um, but you know, there's no transparency associated with the process, and so I mean, again, I'm not saying there's anything nefarious about about who the moderator picks, but I do believe that it's a good thing for our town democracy in our town government to ensure that there is some availability of information about what's taking place um, as these appointments are being made um, so that people feel that um, 
they, they have information about what's happening. So what do you think the skills you need to be? Uh, or what experience do you, do you have and what skills do you think you need and possess to be a good fit to be the town moderator? So, um, you, you know, I, I, I think, um, you know, many of us think of the town moderator as sort of a, a senior statesman for Belmont. And, um, you know, certainly that, that, that seems to be the case in some respects. Uh, you know, our current moderator has, has served um, in that capacity for 16 years. The person, Henry Hall, who served before him, um, I believe served 17 years, and the moderator before that, 13 years. But senior statesman isn't the job. The job is running town meeting, which requires a great deal of planning that involves work with the town clerk, work with the select board, um, to make sure that we cover all of the logistical bases uh, for, for, for how to run the meeting. And then the, the town moderator is there to ensure that the meeting operates smoothly, efficiently, and with some equity. Okay. Is, is, has the current moderator run a smooth meeting, in your opinion, win with equity? So, so we, we have, so, so I'm not criticizing the moderator, but, but you know, we, we do have some practices um, that, um, that I would, um, that I, I think can be improved. So for example, um, the current moderator um, often sets limits on debate. So, so um, he's spoken about the four corners rule. The four corners rule is, um, this is something that's part of town meeting times, um, which is the moderator's Bible. And frankly, it, 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 it's something that, that every town meeting member should be uh, familiarizing themselves with. Mm -hmm. This is this is the sort of the rule book for for town meeting, but the the four corners rule, in um, in the moderator's Bible doesn't actually um, um, govern debate and discussion. What it governs is motions made while a motion is on the table, mm -hmm. and. Um, so from that perspective, I, I think there, there is um, a bit of misunderstanding about the, the, the four corners rule. I also think that, you know, from the perspective of encouraging as healthy a debate and discussion as, as possible, that you want to put as few limits on debate as possible. So, for example, we have legal limits. Um, so, so we can't have people. We can't have people um, engaging in threatening, racist, or obscene speech. That's that's obviously something the moderator can't allow. Mm -hmm. But but beyond that, um, you know, if a town meeting member gets up in front of town meeting and wants to spend their time talking about something that um, you know it may sound a little bit odd to everybody else. Well, that's the prerogative of that town meeting member, and there there is there there from my perspective, there's just no legal basis for for constraining that speech. And I think we have to be concerned with the law. One thing that I'll point out about about lawful speech, um, the Supreme Judicial Court. Uh, for Massachusetts has um, has ruled in the past year uh, that you know public criticism in public meetings of town officials or governmental officials um, cannot be prevented. It can't be censored. It can't be blocked. Um, and um, you know one of one of the one of the moderators rules uh, for governing speech in town meeting has been that uh, public, our town officials are not criticized. Well, I'm not inviting people to criticize anyone, but as a town moderator, I would 
allow people their legal freedom to speak their minds. And if that involves some criticism, that's fine. We should accept that, we should respect that, and continue our meeting. And if someone goes a little too far afield, would you, would you step in? Or well, is it just everybody can tee off on anybody? So, so if somebody is going... That wastes a lot of time. I've, yeah. been, I've, been, I've been, I don't know, Tom, even of uh, 35 plus years. Yeah, so there, there are real efficiency <laughs> arguments about, about town meeting and, and speech. But I think we do have to honor the law. Uh, otherwise, we're, 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 we're putting ourselves in an awkward position. It's just difficult if not impossible to constrain speech in a way that that ensures equity and 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 legal fairness okay. and if someone's if some speakers personal remarks i'll put it that way yeah. personal criticisms somebody would that not be get a response and perhaps defense would that not potentially escalate the meeting into just well, uh, just a raucous situation? No, 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 I don't think so. I, I, th I think, you know, you know, people step up to the mic, they say what they want to say, and we turn to the next person at the mic, and they also say what they want to say. And if somebody criticizes a town official, well, you know, as, as a former town official of sorts, a school committee member. You weren't right? of sorts, you were a town official, all right, as all was right. I. Well, I received, <laughs> I received a, a, a lot of criticism, uh, and you know, we, we, have, we have to be big enough people to accept that you know, n not everyone will, will agree with us, but we're not going to derail the debate and discussion over one person's criticism of another. Okay. So, Town meetings, I've been to a zillion of them, you've been to a zillion of them, in person or remote? So I do favor in-person meetings, absolutely, but um, I, 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 I am partial to the notion that hybrid meetings will allow some people who couldn't otherwise attend to attend and, and so I, I'm in favor of maintaining hybrid meetings. And there are also, there are also meetings where, you know, if there is one topic, one article before town meeting, uh, it's a special town meeting, we'll call it, um, that might take place in January or something, just like the one we, 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 we recently experienced. Um, you know, if, if it can be managed if it can be managed within a remote framework, it doesn't require as much disruption as, as the full in-person town meeting. I'm not opposed to that, and, and I would look to attempt to improve that as well. Is there anything that we've covered that you want to expound for quickly? Or well, to do anything else before I turn the mic over to you for an unfettered comment? Okay, so um, there, there, are definite, there are definitely things that we can do to improve town meeting. There, there are things that we can do to approve the appointment process for the moderator's appointments to, to the various committees, some of which are, are pretty critical committees, like the Warrant Committee. Um, and um, um, I think it's also useful to have more than one person running for this kind of an office. Frankly, the the Collins Center has bemoaned the extent to which we often have uncompetitive races. And um, for this particular position, um, if you go to their appendix in, in the Collins Center report, um, this, this has not been a competitive race for years. It's not healthy for Belmont. So, you know, if, oops, I'm sorry. If you, if you, like, if you like the town meeting and, and, and the appointment process that we have now, I, I would say, you know, vote for the current moderator. But if you're seeking a little bit of change um, and improvement, you know, I'm offering myself up as, as somebody who has some ideas and thoughts about how we can do that, and um, I'm prepared to proceed. Okay, that being said, 
Going to turn the mic over. You got a minute? Mic is yours. So I'm Mike Crowley, and I'm running for town moderator. The town moderator runs town meeting and makes appointments to a number of critical committees, including the warrant committee, also our town finance committee. But there are some things that we can do better. I plan to improve town meeting, increasing education and outreach to encourage more of our diverse community to participate, um, organizing child care to help parents attend, improving remote and, and hybrid options, and ensuring discussion and debate are inclusive and free of unnecessary restrictions. For the moderator's committee appointments, I'm advocating for a more transparent process, skilled appointees uh, who are representative of Belmont's diversity, people committed to public engagement and community-based community priority setting, something that uh, it's really needed when it comes to the Warrant Committee's budget work. We also have, uh, we al also have to see more work on the, the revenue side of the budget um, by the Warrant Committee, um, including comprehensive review of fees, fines, and other charges levied by the town, periodic reappraisal of new growth estimates, and work that supports uh, expanding our commercial tax base. I, I have a long professional history in government finance, policy, and budgeting. I've served as a town meeting member for eight years, and I've previously served uh, six years on the Warrant Committee and four years on the School Committee. I know town meeting and how important the moderator's role is to achieving a better Belmont for all of us. If you'd like to know more or want to get involved in my campaign, please uh, reach it, please visit my website, CrowleyForBelmont.com. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Steve. Well done. That's been Mike Crowley, candidate for moderator, town election, April 2. Good luck, my friend. Thank you, Steve.